So um, before we jump onto the slide and start learning the concepts, uh, the first thing first, uh, you know, let's introduce each other. Uh, first of all, I want to introduce myself. My name is Kamran Mahmood. You are already familiar. Uh, some of the introduction have already given by Danish, but the rest of I'm going to give. Uh, regarding my qualification, I have done bachelor in computer sciences and then master's in computer sciences as well. And then some certifications like Cisco based uh, CCNA, CCNP. I have, I have gone through the CCI labs as well. Although I didn't uh, attempt, uh, which is uh, basically, you know, uh, the single CCI lab basically you need to go into the dubai or somewhere else in uh, like in uh, china uh, i haven't gone through that because uh, you know some uh, uh, technical issues but i have gone through the cci labs uh, so i hope you are going to get a lot from this series and uh, uh, regarding my uh, experience uh, i have uh, over 10 years of experience working as it network engineer and I was basically IT manager for three sites in Saudi Arabia. And those uh, basically were hotels. So many people, you know, they overlooked this uh, hotel industry and they uh, like misunderstood that there is no any kind of IT going on in those uh, hotel environments. But let me tell you, you know, uh, in an organization, you may have for 20 to 40 employees. Uh, then you have uh, multiple switches and routers and, you know, these CCTV camps. But when we talk about the hospitality industry, it is full of IT. On day to day basis, you have to come across with the, you know, uh, so many troubleshootings uh, uh, you have to perform because you have the rush hours, you have so many guests in, uh, in the weekend days. So there are so many troubleshooting going on and you have to troubleshoot every day. Okay. So you uh, uh, get a lot of, you know, uh, experience from such kind of uh, uh, you know working environment which i've been so this is also going to be a very good experience with you so uh, sometime if i feel that uh, the presentation is going to be very dry maybe i will share some cracks and during my jobs what happened so uh, you i hope you will uh, enjoy it so first thing uh, the second thing is uh, i also would like to hear from you uh, since you have been in uh, module one and I hope, uh, just let me go to that slide very quickly. So uh, today uh, we are going to talk about network for additional concepts with quick and tune for the week one module. And this is the second slide. Okay. So the agenda for today's session is the flyby overview of the concepts uh, for the module one. And now you can see the my point, point right? Yes. Okay, that's great. Then if you have any uh, questions and doubts, you can interrupt me anytime. Then we will hit some troubleshooting labs. This will be very basic lab, but very important concepts. Then we have new concepts like Wireshark. How many of you are familiar with Wireshark, please? I just want to listen from you. I only heard the name before, I haven't. I don't, I honestly, I don't even know what it is. Okay, that's fine. How about the Haifa? And Crystal, I've run it. Yes, Crystal. Like a demo purpose and on a lab. And I don't know too much. I mean, in details, no. I just run to, I capture a packet and try okay. to. Okay. That's it. This is enough. Uh, because we are not going to go in detail about Wireshark. We'll just hit, uh, you know, just the surface of Wireshark and I will show you why do we need Wireshark, okay? And then in subsequent videos, you don't have to worry about these things. We will do a lot in detail. And when we will finish about to finish CCNA, you will see a lot of changes in you, okay? The positive changes, I mean. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. Let's move to the side. This is surprise quiz, but unfortunately, you have not gone through this all module, but still uh, I will ask the question. So maybe maybe you will uh, answer me. Yeah, why do we need, yes, why do we need a network? 
we need a network to connect devices. So, mm -hmm. Okay. For what? What purpose for? Oh, it can be to for sharing resources. It's, yes, that's it. That's All right, let's continue, Haifa. Uh, oh God. Um, why do we need a network? Um, mm -hmm. Networks connect infrastructures together. I mean, if like, for example, what we're doing now, we're all working remotely, or most of us are working remotely, a network makes that possible. Um, I'm sorry, what was the other thing that, the, what that's was the other part of the question? No, that's it. Why do we need that? But and basically, the okay. idea behind networking is if we want to send some information from one computer to another computer, we need some intermediary devices like the router, the switches, or even the cable. You can directly connect two computers with a cable and still it will be called a network. Okay? Okay. Okay, I have no idea whether you have gone through this or no, uh, this, uh, this concept, but uh, for the lightweight devices, what type of cable will be used? Any idea? Cross, what is it called? Crystal first and then high form, lightweight oh, devices. Uh, I mean here in this plain in, in, uh, English, basically, if we have two switches, or let's suppose two computers, we want to connect these two computers together. What type of cable will be used? We will use the crossover cable. Awesome. Okay, Hefa. Uh, I agree with that. Okay, that's fine. Yes, the crossover cable will be used. Which one is fast, TCP or UDP? UDP. Mm -hmm. Okay. UDP because it doesn't care to. It doesn't care about um, receiving a okay. response. Yes, you are right. What is the third layer of OSI model? You are familiar with OSI model? Yes. Yes. Okay, that's great. What is the third layer? Network layer. Mm -hmm. Hefa? Yep, network layer. That's great. What PDT term, PDU term will be used at data link layer? On every layer, these uh, PDU terms are defined as something, a unique name. What is those names are at data link layer? It's gonna be frames. Haifa? I don't know. Okay, this is frame. Presta, you're right. Ah, uh, okay. The difference between between patch panel versus patch cord. Mm, the patch panel will have the key stone jack and the cord, mm -hmm. the patch cord will have the cables, the number. Exactly, the exactly. So patch panel is just a hardware device where you will connect the cable and the patch cord itself is a cable. Okay. Mm -hmm. Difference between unicast and multicast. I haven't. Wait, Crystal, did you want to go first? Sorry, I know that we're doing it by letter. Uh, no problem. You know, if uh, if uh, the Crystal has given an answer, it means um, I do not need to go uh, to Haifa, okay? So uh, so now this uh, Haifa, if you can answer this one, the seven one. So I haven't done unicast and multicast, um, but from the name, I would guess that uh, yeah, yeah. one broadcasts to uni, which is like one, and then multicast, which is several. Yes, you're right. That's it. This is it. Okay. Again, Haifa, what is CSMA slash CD? 
Danish, what is, uh, I didn't hear him answer. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I have no idea what that is. And Christelle? I know the beginning. Cariescence. Okay. Yes, right. You are going good. I forgot M. Okay, no problem. This is career sense multiple access with oh. collision detection. Yeah. Okay, we're going to learn about these things. Uh, we're going to learn and we'll talk about these let me, things. Let me, but, add, let me add something over here. Okay. So the, the surprise quiz is kind of like, you know, you think about this like an interview right here, Haifa and uh, Christelle. Yeah. It's kind of like it, it just makes you realize that, look, if I don't know too much about this or I'm not confident, uh, this is exactly a interview will go, right? We're not talking about how much you know about in terms of technicality, right? Like how much do you know technical uh, information about this? It's more about if you are, let's say, if you have a very small answer that you knew that, okay, I can, I can just, man, I know this stuff. I can just give a quick answer. Then this means that you are kind of nearing that interview, uh, the confidence for interview. That's kind of like the, what I would say that why you should be focusing on learning on how to answer a question, right? This is really gonna help you when you finish up this whole module, you should come back to this video again, get all these eight questions again, and then Give, it, give the answer, like, you know, uh, stand in the mirror or something, or maybe come, come to the Discord and say, this is my answer now. Would you accept this for an interview? That's why the surprise quizzes are very important because it just kind of makes you realize that you can learn a lot for many, many days, but if you are not able to give a quick answer, then of course, it's still a weak point just for the interviews. Does that, does that make sense? Yes. Okay, let's go ahead. Okay, yes. another thing. Uh, Okay, you want to continue something? Uh, yeah, I was going to ask, Danish, when you say uh, like an interview, do you mean, you know, when we do the intern um, interviews and we tell them not to say, I don't know, is that, are you referring to that also or just for our knowledge later? Yeah, this is just for knowledge right now. now. This I don't know is a part that when we, let's say, finish this whole module, like once fully after live sessions and you guys finished it, then we're going to give you some interview questions. I'm going to be posting those questions. And that's where then you will type it down in your documentation. And of course, you're not going to type, I don't know, in the document. Um, and that's where I'm going to be checking for that type of stuff. And later on, when it's, when it's a, like the hot seat type of thing, when we do, that's where mm -hmm. we're going to get into that. But for now, it's more of knowledge. Like, I want you to look at these questions for now. Uh, think about it. Did you answer 50% of it or did you answer 60%, 70, 80, 90, right? That, okay. that tells, that tells like, if you are going to go and start applying for jobs right now, you are going to be exactly in that situation for any other modules. You're going to be around that then. So it's, okay. it's all about that building the confidence. So when he's doing these surprise quizzes, just think of yourself in an interview, like, okay, that's exactly what I'm going to answer in an interview as well. If I don't know here, I'm not going to know it over there too, right? Okay, okay. That's it's just for knowledge right now. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, so another usage of surprise quiz is also, it will also help me, you know, to realize that at what level you are currently, because you have already gone through module one. And I just want to uh, estimate, uh, do I need to go in a lot in detail in this session, or I will just skip quickly if you are already familiar. So. I assume that you have like 90% knowledge at this uh, stage because you have almost given all of the answers correctly. So let's, uh, I don't uh, move to the slide uh, where it is titled seven o OSI layers. So why do we need this, this OSI layer? Anyone can tell me? It's literally what we use to transfer data. Okay. So, and? Oh, sorry. I wanted to add that from my understanding is a standard that they put in place so that we can have many, uh, many 
cons constructor of you are right you are right for example if i open one company uh which uh, uh basically um uh, creating or developing uh some kind of ethernet network interface adopters it's a manufacturer company and then i have to follow some kind of standards okay which is governed by iso international standard organization it is a governing body okay it will develop some rules and regulations for the rest of the people who are going to manufacture these devices like switches routers network interface card even the cables uh, the fiber optic cables so they have to follow so this is the governing body who basically govern this osi layer model for everyone to follow so that's this is basically it. okay that's, that's like if you if you have a, a even a television with the ethernet right and you want to plug that in it that ethernet has to follow some type of standards which we're talking about the iso and osi layers so you know it's going to get an ip address it's going to understand what my phone is going to tell this ethernet that is going to be connected to that tv so that's it it can be anything exactly. it's just the standard that we need to follow and that's why this layering is used that we can put it into other devices it is not just router or switches is everything and they have to talk to each other for that they have to use some type of standard and that's why we need this uh, type of uh, yeah. layering approach exactly so let's uh, talk about osi layer in detail with this one example in the next slide i will show you the animation as well so it will clear your concept so here we have the transmitter or you can call it sender and then here we have a receiver and what sender and receiver mean basically this is your computer or host machine uh, and you type www.google.com and what is going to happen because this is going to go some where in the server of a google which is a receiver so this is a server located some where in a for location uh, and these are the things going to happen during our communication and what those things are it's it is going to go through first of all it will hit the application layer presentation and session these usually all comes under a same layer but just for the clarification purpose we are going to make it a separate so you have a better idea what is it application layer all kind of your applications world wide web your uh, http traffic which is not secure https traffic which is secure then we have some other multiple uh, applications being run on application layer like uh, we have ftp file transfer protocol we have smtp which is used for the mail exchange for the emails conversation basically then we have telnet we have uh, you know so many applications running on a application layer so whatever the input you are going to do will be done from the application layer so this is going to be your entry point so let's suppose you type www.google.com on your web browser it is going to happen on your application layer with the help of web browser okay so the web browser works on application layer and this is you are going to be your seventh layer not to confuse that this is a or application layer so it start from first layer this is also uh, a very good interview question they often ask uh, what application layer works at uh, which uh, basically uh, what is the layer number application layer work on okay so it is seventh layer after that you will go and hit the presentation layer 
and presentation layer has to do with the formatting. And what does formatting mean? For example, we have some images which are in a JPEG format. How this computer is going to differentiate JPEG format versus PNG format? So these kind of all kind of formatting is going to happen on a presentation layer. This is also known as the encoding. Encoding, formatting, everything is going to happen on your presentation layer. Then this is seventh layer. This is sixth. And the fifth one is a session layer. Let's suppose we have one web browser running and we have multiple sessions going on, which is going to the same server, which is Google. We, we do this every day, right guys? Like uh, everyone, hey, and Crystal. We do this every day. We open a browser, we open multiple tabs. Sometimes even on let's say job skills share or Google, you open many tabs to get to the same server, but you're asking for different information. And that's what the session is doing because you're you have you're basically connecting to different sessions on that same application on the top. So you have this browser open, you're trying to connect using the seventh layer, then it goes to sixth layer because it may have images, it may have different images, it's doing presentation over there. And then you have multiple sessions that can be happening on that same browser by using session layer using multiple tabs. That's just a little practical visual example because again, it's not easy to to present this, but that you do this every day, right? On your work machines and your own personal machines, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so the other important aspect in the session layer is, let's suppose I gave you example, if you, you have visited some, uh, the banking applications and you log in and you do some transactions, usually application developers, they de uh, set some, session information in your application let's suppose for 15 minutes means your activity if you are active on that that uh, website uh, this session layer will be activated and it will be like regenerate this uh, number but if you are doing nothing after five minutes after 10 minutes you usually use this word my session has been disconnected so in in technical this is in technical term this is called session tearing session has been tiered so this is also another task of the session layer so if your session is on like in the hotmail or gmail uh, if your web browser is open and maybe you left that uh, uh, computer and you had no idea that uh, you had to log out after some time, the session is going to expire and it will be logged off. So this is an another functionality of this session. After that, we have a fourth layer is the transport layer. The transport layer, we have two very important well-known protocols being used, TCP and the UDP. And the crystal already uh, you know, answered this, that TCP and, and the HEPA as well. The TCP is basically uh, the connection-oriented pro protocol and UDP is connection-less. So uh, can you answer me means, okay, this is connection oriented and this is connection less. So what is the use? What is the purpose of these protocols then? Why can't we use just TCP or just the UDP? Anyone can answer, please. When you, I, I don't know if this is what you want. Okay. But uh, for TCP, um, we use, like, let's say you're logging into your bank okay. uh, online, you would use TCP. 
Um, but UDP, you would use it to stream like Netflix and things like that, because if okay. a few packets are missing, it's not going to make uh -huh. much of a difference. However, with yes, TCP, exactly. it does make a difference. I don't know if yes, that's exactly. the answer you were looking yes, for. Yes, exactly. Okay. This, is, this is what I'm looking for. So the TCP is connection oriented where we need acknowledgements. We want to confirm that our end to end connectivity has been established. With the help of this is called three way handshake. And I'm going to show this as well three way handshake. Okay, so what will happen in the handshake, the sync will be sent to the receiver and the receiver is going to send back the sync act. Basically, it is saying that um, I have received your uh, thing and I'm going to acknowledge that. And then in the end, the act will be sent. This will be the final act. So this is how the connection will be established. And then whatever the transaction is going to happen later on, it will happen. But in case of UDP, we do not require these things. Why? Because as the have I said that uh, uh, we want to send the packet as soon as possible. If I give you a layman example of this, if we are watching a TV and you have uh, come across with this issue so many times, there's kind of like uh, some pixel lost during the, you know, some broadcast, you are watching some movie or some um, uh, like uh, a match okay so some pixel loss so do you think that uh, your television is gonna send back uh, the acknowledgement to the uh, sender that kindly send me that pixel again back to me no no it doesn't require it doesn't bother so where we want to send the information as quickly as possible we are gonna use udp and where we need the reliable because reliability also a very important part of your networking. We want reliability on your web pages because, for example, if I'm trying to access some uh, uh, web page like jobskillshare.org and I just in return, I just received the, uh, the logo only. And the rest of the contents I haven't received. It doesn't make sense. That's why we're going to use TCP for the reliability. So Kamran, okay. I have just one question from a user perspective. And okay. because we are on TCP UDP, I want to add it here. So then it's going to, we, we okay. haven't remembered it. So as a network engineer, where do you get in and say, oh, I'm going to make a decision for this type of network for TCP and this, I'm gonna use UDP. Do you do we do this kind of stuff as a network engineer? This is coming from a person who's gonna be like, hey, why do I need to know about TCP UDP now? Is it, am I gonna be actually working on this or is this because just for troubleshooting? <laughs> okay, right? so uh, okay, yeah. I'm a new person. Now I'm thinking as a network engineer, I got my job. Okay, I got a Cisco switch and router infrastructure is getting ready. Now I need, where do I really need to know about mm -hmm. this? Right. Okay. Is, this, is this for purpose of knowing how technology works and how these different things work? But do, or do we as a network engineer for Christelle and Hefa, can you tell them like why, why you really need this um, at, at this point? Like what, what would be the, the practical thing? I know it's going to come okay. later on, but let's just talk mm -hmm. a little brief on that. Okay. So as a network engineer, to be very honest, we have not to worry about these protocols, TCP and UDP, other than the concepts and the troubleshooting. Because most of the application, if I let's suppose if we talk about uh, uh, the Skype, okay, and then uh, this uh, Zoom, they are using kind of UDP application behind the scene. Okay, so in case if this application is not working, we have to troubleshoot UDP whether the UDP port. Uh, in a, in a subsequent you know uh, slide, I will show you what port the discord is using what port of the udp of this zoom is being used at the back and maybe 
uh, at a firewall in a firewall because this is going to be beyond uh, this uh, you know uh, this lecture but no problem i'm just going to give you a little information let's suppose we have a firewall and i hope every everybody familiar what firewall is yep yes. because it, this is very common in your even uh, it is not even hardware you can uh, consider it like the application firewall usually we have the hard hardware appliances firewall as well just assume we have application firewall so in this application firewall the chances are somebody has blocked the port for zoom which works on top of utp let's suppose zoom is using port 5124 this is as just assumption and somebody has block this udp port so you as a network administrator need to troubleshoot what is going on and you must have an idea first of all what is udp and only then you can go and troubleshoot if you are not having any distinction between tcp udp you you're not going to solve this uh, problem thank you for for giving that example so so uh, hey friend crystal this is why the reason i asked this question just to give you some kind of remembrance of how important it is even if even if this is not something you're going to go and and oh i can see tcp or i can see udp or i can practice on it like that it may not be like that but it's like understanding of it if you don't know what kind of applications are working on what type of uh, ports and how do you then go back and check it then of course your troubleshooting as a network engineering is very hard you you because most of it is going to be a call related to something like this where things are getting blocked things are slow or things are uh, you know being used a lot the bandwidth is too much so you will have to kind of kind of what do you what do you do like you have to hunt down these things by knowing or understanding these different type of protocols um i have a possibly very stupid question So I'm okay. sorry if this sounds really dumb. Um I know that in your example you used <clears throat> Zoom and it being on port whatever 5124 whatever. Um mm -hmm. I know this is just an example, but let's say let's say they block the ability to use Zoom. Um mm -hmm. would WebEx meeting work on that same port? Like would it have if you block one port are you also going to block any application that uses that one port or can you just specifically block no every application has its own well known port okay. okay yeah so if you if you block that specific number of port on a network level then yes it it would it would block okay. it but again it depends on that that port is if it's running from that server because you know like listen if we have a Uh, one web server with a port 80 and i block that port on that server then yes on that server anything with that yes, port 80 all the web traffic yes exactly yeah and if we block the port 80 on a network level this means everything meaning port 80 is being blocked guys you guys cannot use it doesn't matter who you are what server it's going to be blocked for everyone does that make sense yes that makes sense. that's perfect thank you we gonna learn about these ports a lot in detail let me tell you in the ccna so you don't have to worry so just you know i'm just scratching the surfaces you have basic idea what we are doing and where we are going to go in a future okay so get the basic concepts here and by the way your question was very good we have some well known ports we have some random ports in computer basically we have from 0 to 65000 535 ports available in our ports of which we have 0 to 1024 ports are the well known ports these are kind of dedicated ports are allocated like for example 80 80 443 these are allocated for http and https let's suppose if you block these all ports 
nothing is gonna work on your web browser. Your Facebook will be blocked, your YouTube will be blocked. So this is gonna happen. Okay, then we have the random ports which will be allocated by your computer to your source machine. So I don't want to discuss, otherwise you will be confused, you know, I will go very quickly, but just uh, get the idea that if we are blocking a well-known ports like this 8080 something, even Skype has some well-known UDP port, you can search out. And if you block that one, Skype will be totally blocked in your computer. Okay, that makes sense, thank you. Okay. And, and just a tip guys, when he say, we will discuss this later on. Remember, you guys are still in Network Plus course right now. So he's trying his best to kind of scratch things, give you examples. But I also told him not to go extreme deeper because that is what the CCNA is going to cover. So we don't want to bombard you with, you know, like a like a port and then let's get into some really deep port type of stuff. So that's way this way you will learn in a, in a kind of like a chunks. Uh, does that make sense? So it doesn't become like a at one point, oh, we just jumped into something very deep immediately. So just understand this whole flow. That's how it's going to work. Network Plus slowly, slowly is going to get into more deeper, deeper, deeper. And, and CCN is going to be extreme uh, Cisco stuff. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I like that. Okay. Let's move on. Uh, the other uh, layer is network layer. And, you know, your CCNP even the CCIE, 70% of your work is gonna happen on this network layer. Day and night, you will be troubleshooting network layer. So this is very important layer. And it has to do with the IPs. That's post IP people. And why we use network layer? Um, if I give you analogy of uh, your, uh, Let's suppose we have the service provider, or not service provider, but the cloud, which is internet. Here we have one sender mach machines connected with this and the receiver is connected with this. Now, the user typed www.google.com. It went to application presentation session transport layer and now once it will hit the network layer which means what is the best path my uh uh this uh, it's gonna take the best which one is going to be the best path whatever the communication is going to happen it's going to take some path when we talk about the clouds or the internet just think like a thousand and thousand of routers interconnected with each other. If I give you an example, let's suppose this is our internet um, cloud. And I'm going to uh, send information from my sender to receiver. And these all routers are connected with each other. In some fashion that it, there is a redundancy. And what redundancy is if one path or the router or the path is lost, we still have the reachability from the other path. So other than redundancy, we should also have the best path, okay? We want to reach to our destination, but with the optimal way. Let's suppose this is going to be our optimal way. So this is going to be our optimal path that basically comes under network layer. That's it. A lot of routing protocols we're gonna discuss in a CCNA and even in a network pro as well, like RIP, OSPF, 
EIGRP. These are very advanced concepts. Just I want to hit, hit here just to get you familiar that at a network layer, we basically looking for a best path and nothing else. Okay. Okay. Then we have a data link layer. And let's say this uh, like 40% uh, or even 50%. We're going to work on data link layer in a CCNA and CCNP and even the CCI level because the switches works at data link layer. If you are not familiar with the switches, we are going to discuss a lot in detail in the subsequent videos. So basically what happens, a switch is does nothing but just switch the packet. Whatever it received at its one port, it's going to spread to all other ports that's it whatever the information it is receiving it is sending from the other side this is what switch does and switches use a very important concept this is called mac addresses which we are going to learn later on with the help of mac addresses it is going to communicate so these all things happens at a data link layer and then last but not least, the physical layer, which is nothing but all about your cabling. Because we need to connect our, uh, this uh, sender device with the receiver somehow with some cable. So we need some physical, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, a mode we need required. So uh, at this layer, your data will be sent in a bits and bytes. So let me talk about the PDU. PDU is a general term used for this all packets or whatever you call it data. So the PDU protocol data units is the term used for this data. But you can clearly see at application presentation and session layer, this P PDU is called a data. But when this data hit the transport layer, this is called segment. Similarly, at network layer, it is called packet. And maybe you have heard this often that, you know, my packet is transferred from this location to that location. It means they are talking about the network layer. If they are saying my frame is stuck somewhere, my frame is not moving, my frame has been stuck or choked out, it means they are talking about a data link layer. And the bits, bytes, worked on a physical layer. So far so good. Anyone has any confusion? And, and you know, in network engineering level, when, when you talk to an, another network engineer, the way he was explaining, that's how they're going to talk. And that's why you need to know about these terms. And yeah, it takes a little time. That's the, the whole purpose of this whole course. He's going to keep doing it, keep telling you all this stuff. But that's how a network engineer talks to another network engineer. They don't go into like, you know, just very basic stuff. They're just gonna talk, oh, the packet. Yeah, the frames. Yeah, this stuff. So you see why sometimes when we talk to a network engineer like this, and we, we get a little confused because their language is a little different. And I said that the reason for that is that they know this, this because they can break things down easily that way. They don't have to say every time transport layer or session layer, they may just say data. And you, you already know that he's talking about the three, uh, you know, seven, six and five right there, right? So that, that's the language that I also try to kind of go back and, and, and kind of like just remember these little, uh, you know, terms that he's talking about, because that's how they're going to ask you. Into okay. And even in a CCNA uh, questions uh, in the exam, they, they, they will trick you into thinking that, or uh, they will put the question like, they will not talk about transport layer. They will be saying, um the the segment uh sent from this location to that location so 
it means he is talking about the transport layer. So this is what he wants to check the level uh, of your, you know, uh, thinking that what you are thinking at this moment. If he is talking about segment, it means they are talking about the transport layer. If they are talking about the packets, it means they are talking about the network layer, the routers. And if they are saying the frames, it means the data link layer or the switches. Okay. So I have a question and yeah. again, sorry if this is silly. No um, problem, no, but keep asking. But, okay, so the first, sorry, seven, six and five are data layers. Would they mention data layer and then you have to guess what, if they're talking about application presentation? These session? are seven, six, five. Yeah. Okay. So if, if he, if, if a question mentions the data layer, is it going to be, oh, I guess it's depending on if they're talking about like. If they're yeah, talking they, about they, the data. They're gonna, yeah, they're gonna break it down in a way that they may say, this is a web browser. It, it went to this website. It used this application. What layer number has okay. this used? Okay. Or they may say this is an app, this is a uh, website with an image. So what kind of when you send this image to another machine, what layer did it actually touch? Like the number. So you would say okay. layer six. Right. If it okay. says if it says oh uh, that that website that you just opened and it just got disconnected after five minutes, what happened? Which number did it hit? Oh, that's the you know fifth okay. right yes correct me if i'm wrong Cameron. yes you're right okay this is sender and this is receiver and when sender will send the information to receiver the sum process is going to happen which is known as encapsulation in the next slide i will demonstrate but just you know, a fly by over, uh, overview, I'm just going to give you here. This is called the encapsulation. And here, when receiver will receive the packet, all the steps is it, it will go through, it is gonna de-encapsulate here. I will just type de-encapsulate, okay? So what is encapsulation? How on earth these layers gonna know what is my next layer with the help of encapsulation? And what encapsulation is nothing, it will add, for example, here we have a data and the data could be like your www traffic. It is gonna attach a header information, which is basically mentioning what layer I'm going to face next. So, that's why we used encapsulation. Once it has reached a physical layer on other end, now it is going to de-encapsulate because it is moving one by one to the receiver. So it has to remove this all, whatever it has coated here. Okay, if you didn't get the next slide is going to clear this. So let's move to the next slide. So encapsulation and de-encapsulation. Data encapsulation adds the protocol information to the data so the data transmission can take place in a proper way. And what is that proper way? I'm just gonna show. So the encapsulation is happening. For example, sender is going to send some information to the receiver. Encapsulation will happen. At this time, there is no header will be attached because it's simple data, which is in application presentation session. And we are very familiar that at seven, six, and five, we call it a data. And nothing is attached to this payload or data or the information you are going to send to the receiver. So what is gonna happen next? As it hit the transport layer, it is now called segment and the TCP header is attached. Why? 
so it will know about the tcp because we are going to the transport layer so it attached before it sent to the transport layer the tcp header is attached so it will hit the transport layer as it is mentioned here so the data transmission can take place in a proper way means i do not want from my session layer to go all the way to the network layer no i do not want like this i want in a proper fashion so from this i want to hit transport layer so that's why i added this tcp header and this is and this uh, procedure is called encapsulation so the next so here network layer we know it is called packet the data is still there now we have a new header which is ip that is correlate with the network layer and uh, as you can see if you can clearly see the tcp has been grayed out why because we do not need tcp at network layer it has to do with transport layer so the next level now this thing is called frame the data is still there tcp and the ip has been grayed out why because as a data link layer we need ethernet header to represent we are at layer 2 after that data will be sent across the physical layer which is nothing but the cables and as you can see 101010 which is bits and bytes so our data is going to transfer into bits and bytes basically one is positive and zero is negative so this is how computer understand the language of bits and bytes so on other end the same process will happen but in opposite direction and this header information is going to removed or stripped off this is called de encapsulation so at the data link layer phys physical link layer told at data link layer we we are going to go to the data link layer so ethernet frame is going to be attached and then similarly it will move up as you can see now the ip is added because we are at network layer the tcp is added it was already added but now it is de encapsulating because whatever we received from here it is it is going to de encapsulate here for the end to end proper uh, conversation okay any confusion here no no so far so good okay that's great let's uh, move on to the next slide sorry so this i am a little bit late i just it's just a confirmation from you that i want to have on the on the last um picture i see eth on the data link is it representing the llc and mac exactly okay. because this is ethernet header and we going to work with the you know the switches and you know how the switches switches if you are familiar mm. it used to two protocol uh, one is mac address oh, and oh i'm so sorry i'm sorry okay so ethernet you know this is uh, like uh, it is too early to talk on this uh, i guess on this concept in uh, future nuggets we gonna uh, use a lot in detail about what is mac and what is llc okay okay because hifi is there and i don't want uh, her to confuse okay okay we will go step by step and whatever your questions will be i will address in the uh, subsequent uh, slides okay so here we come on the slide where it's uh, talking about the tcp ip versus udp as you are wise enough to know what is tcp uh, uh, the difference between the tcp versus the udp uh, so just uh, go over this uh, one by one the connection oriented three way handshake uh, i told you it goes through uh, the process is known as three way handshake because this is reliable but the drawback is it is slow 
it used kind of concepts called sequencing and acknowledgement so it knows that mm, the, the the information that is going to before they going to send information first of all they going to confirm whether they are there or no they are alive or not so they going to use sequencing and acknowledgement then they use the concept windowing basically how much data it is going to send in a one uh, for example if uh, uh, the first packet is sent with uh, three packets let's say three uh, just let me i can show you with so let's say we want to uh, to communicate between these two computers so first they gonna go through uh, the sync and sync act and act process and then this computer is gonna send one packet and it will receive and it will answer with a two what it is it it is saying basically it is saying that i have received your first packet but i am expecting the second packet now this time this computer is going to send you three when the receiver will receive it will answer with a four it's saying i have received all of your packets until three and i am expecting the fourth so as you can see from one it has gone to the two packets now now after that it is going to send four five six the gradually there is an increment in the packet and this is happening from where from the receiver end receiver is basically dictating our sender send me more and more and more and more until it will stop it will say that's enough enough so that concept is called windowing this is also known as the sliding window means receiver has some kind of limitation after that let's suppose this is that only three packets it can send and then it will keep sending three three packets until uh, the process finish the other concept is known as par which is known as positive acknowledgement with and the retransmission what if this for example uh, they are sending some sync sync act what if this acknowledgement is failed and you know what is acknowledgement acknowledgement is sent to make sure the sender that uh, it has received the packet okay but what in case if the acknowledgement is failed then what will happen then it is going to use par this is just concept which is known as positive acknowledgement with a retransmission and this you know uh, the sender will uh, wait for some uh some millisecond or second and if it will not receive this uh, acknowledgement it is going to send uh these old packets again so this is known as par why i introduce these concepts because these are very good interview questions they can ask what is been doing they can ask what is sequencing and acknowledgement they can ask even what is sliding window instead of windowing then what is par got it yes good well pa could you repeat a little bit please i did okay, this is, i agree with so yes this is positive you can type like positive acknowledgement with retransmission got it or you want to understand the concept again for the par 
So it's the same thing we retransmit when we have we don't have knowledge. Is it exactly okay. when we fail to get the acknowledgement because sender we have a sender here we have a receiver here. Sender is sending the information again and again. But what in case and the receiver is gonna acknowledgement send the acknowledgement back to the sender that I have received your packets. Okay. But my question is, what if this acknowledgement is failed at first place? So this is the thing will help, which is path. It will wait for some time. It will means it will wait for some fraction of second. And if acknowledgement is not received, it is going to retransmit the packets, old packets again. How many times is it going to try to retransmit? It, let's say it the first time fails and the second time fails. How many times is it going to try? Uh, it, before it, 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 it doesn't off? depend. It doesn't depend, but it doesn't happen often. Okay. It is in a very, you know, a fraction of millisecond that you, you're not going to aware about this, how, when and how it's going to happen. But this is just a concept that if, if it received to fail the acknowledgement, it will wait for some time to send those old packets again, which is called PAR. Got, got it? Got it. Okay, that's it. And then we have a UDP. As we know, this is the fast. You can consider it like a roller coaster. Okay. Where you need a speed. And you can consider it like a uh, aeroplane because when you need to board on a aeroplane, you must need to provide your passport information, your ticket, everything, and then you are ready to travel. But in case of UDP, this is fast. We need to reach our destination as soon as possible. So. Uh, let's go to the wire chart and I will give you a quick demo how these things looks in a real. I'm not gonna going to give you a training about the wire chart, but just I will give you information about TCP and UDP, how it looks like because wire chart is another chapter and this is also add ons means uh, slowly and steadily. I will give you like little, little dose about the wire chart. And at the end of the day, you will be aware enough about Wireshark, how it works. Okay. So you don't have to worry about Wireshark right now. I just keep going to give you a demo. So you can have a clear picture about TCP versus UDP. So can you see the wire chart? Yes. Okay. So this is just the landing page or can say the dashboard. And this wire chart basically is used to capture the packet. If I give you a little demonstration. Let's suppose we have two computers. Uh, and it is sending some information to this computer. If the wire shark is installed in this computer, on this interface, we can enable this wire shark and it will give us a, a lot nitty gritty details about the packets or what is going on in our network. But make sure it is only going to give me information from this end. Excuse me, Cameron, are you do drawing something? Oh, is it not? Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes. Just a minute. Let me share. I don't know. I shared it, but why every time? We are just okay. looking at. Why. Okay. Let me select these all things. Now it's okay. Can you see? Yes. I mean, we don't see drawing, but we see the. Sorry. <laughs> Very sorry for that. And thank you for pointing out. So I was giving uh, the demonstration. Let's suppose we have two computer PC one 
and we have a PC2. Okay. And the Wireshark, if it is this is kind of application, if it is installed on this computer, then if this in, computer is going to send some information to this computer, we can capture this all information on this interface. And it is going to give me all, as I said, the nitty gritty details, what is happening in our network or what is happening on this network interface card. But we also have some other terms known as span and R span. which is used in a Cisco. Because we are not bound only to this in network interface card. What if we have one switch here and this computer is connected this and then there is another computer that is connected here and I am interested to capture the traffic for the other in computer interface, then what? Then we will use span, which is switch port analyzer just don't worry about this we will do a lot in detail in when we will hit the ccna but just for a overview and just basic concept we will use span and then our span is let's suppose we have multiple switches connected in a daisy chain fashion and we want to capture whatever the traffic is going through this interface network interface card then what we want to capture from this computer. So Wireshark is installed in this computer and we want to capture the packet that is coming back and forth on this switch that is far away where we use this concept is called R span and R is st stand for remote. Remote switch port analyzer. Okay. So this is just a fly by overview of Wireshark. Uh, what basically we used for and I'm going to give you a demo. So basically we need to go into this capture and we have to, uh, let me, let me run this again. Sorry. Just a minute. I will enable that one again. That's uh, the best background wow. I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is from wow. <laughs> my daughter. She loves uh, these animals a lot <laughs> me too i understand completely <laughs> <laughs> so can you see the wireshark yes yep okay that's fine so we have multiple network interface cards why because i am running some virtual machines on my on my computer then i have some wireless network adopters like uh, this is my lan physical connectivity for the physical connection then this is wireless so i have multiple uh, network interface card but uh, you have option to choose only one because you are going to analyze the packets only one interface so in this uh, example, I'm going to capture the packet from my LAN, which is basically connected uh, to my access point. So you need to just click on this local area connection and double click on this one. And as you can see in the background, it is start to capturing the packets and currently is UDP. Why? Because we are running this Zoom session so that's why we have so many udp uh sessions going on so let's go to some website uh just gonna let me share uh let's go to some job skillshare.org And then when you will go back, you will see some TCP activity as well. So let's stop this capture from here. 
just in a fraction of second, did you notice that how many packets we have captured so far? Almost 9,425 packets. Oh. Okay, but you don't have to worry about because we can filter it out. Let's suppose if I am only interested in a TCP packet. So this is called the filter. Here, some specific commands we need to apply, but this is very simple. What we are looking for here, we are looking for the TCP. So type TCP and hit enter. So we are only hitting TCP. Not to confuse this TLS, this is transport layer secure, as it is mentioned here, transport layer security. Uh, it is using HTTPS 443. This is the port number for HTTPS. Uh, since we are here, I'm going to mention HTTPS use 443 for secure connectivity. Means whatever, you know, uh, for example, uh, if we are, are doing some kind of transaction on a bank, okay, obviously it is going to happen using HTTPS protocol because it is secure. And what does secure means? Whatever the communication is going to happen, it will be encrypted. If some, you know, some rogue person or some evil person is, is sitting in the ISP, in the service provider, and try because the, we, our all this data is going through where? The ISP. And someone is sitting in the ISP and he's capturing the packet. Then what? He can get and hands on your uh, all uh, uh, in, information like credit card or we do not want. So that's why we use HTTPS, which is secure. And opposed to HTTPS, we have HTTP, which works on AT, which is not secure. Okay. So here we are, and we I just filtered TCP. And if I select some TCP packet like this one, it is going to give me some information like the number, what is the number of this packet? the time it hit to this packet. Before it was like this kind of millisecond and the time when we received this packet, it was this time. Then this is the source. It is being sent from which source and 192.168.100.3 is my computer IP address. So this is my, my machine. This is source. You can check from here. This is destination where, where I'm heading to. This is 198.251. Some public IP. This is also called at public IP. This is also a very good interview question. They can ask what is public IP? What is live IP? They all have similar name. Live IP and public IP both are same. It means you are going to somewhere. Uh, maybe this is job skill share server, which is running this public IP. It is using what kind of protocol? The TCP, which is secure. And currently it is giving me acknowledgement. But if I will show you, uh, if you right click on this one TCP and go into the flow TCP stream, click, just close this down. We don't need this one. And just come on the top of this, uh, not uh, this one, just again, you can do right click, go flow TCP stream. Uh, actually, I'm going to show you those sync, sync at. Uh, okay, let me do it again. So I just uh, uh, erase my filter or remove the filter to return back the original, this all packets where it is showing the TCP and UDP. So I need to come into the TCP packet. Let's go this one. 
right click go into follow and tcp stream because uh, before why, why that was the problem coming because um, i was already filtered the tcp and then i was applying another filter so it didn't work as you can see it went through some uh, fin packets and this was already in my basically uh, the conversation already happened so that's why you know if you notice there is a fin packet it means this, this is going to be your last packet it is saying that my communication is going to finish and we receive the acknowledgement so this kind of this is called the tcp uh, communication is happening if you select this tcp you can see we have some another nitty gritty detail which has to do with your osi layers if you notice just forget this one the first one for uh, don't worry about this one ethernet we know works at which layer layer 2 layer layer 2 and we have to deal with mac addresses on ethernet 2 you will find the mac address information source and the destination okay so that, that this destination basically is my access point this is the mac address or the identification of my mac address we will talk about mac address a lot in detail so not to confuse just uh, get the concept of what is happening in the voice shark then we have the next layer which is ip or the network layer basically it is give me giving me information that it is using ipv4 version as you can see ipv4 and the source is 192.168.100.3 which is my computer and 192.168.100.3 which is basically the ip address of my access point okay but actually i i need to go into some another destination which is some public ip so this is how you are going to get the information some nitty gritty detail what is happening inside your packets if you want i can expand more this one to take a lot detail lot a lot of detail uh, which i do not want to you know explain here right now because uh, you will be confused otherwise then we have another layer which is called transport layer and we have already learned in the osi section transport layer works with what tcp and udp and the ports okay so if we expand this one as you can see we discussed about the tcp has some kind of sequencing acknowledgement windowing everything and you can notice here uh we have sequencing we have acknowledgement we have pin packets we have windowing so just by looking at just this information we can you know we are clear enough that we are talking about the tcp here the tcp is the protocol tcp use source port and destination port as i discussed earlier from 0 to 65535 if you want to see the information you can see it is using source port which is not well known it is not well known because this some kind of random because when you will learn about more about about the protocols numbers in detail you will see this is not a well known port 
On the other hand, the destination port is 443. And you are wise enough to understand this is HTTPS. Okay. So TCP is using, as I said, these kind of concept plus ports numbers. Now that's this. This is a great example to show you you a visual like you know how it just a simple packet, you know flows through the network and how engineers will just get in if there is something going on on a big network level like let's say a help desk contacted you that it's not just one machine it's every machine that is just having this issue with whatever it is you know like specific maybe they are not getting a full. Uh, you know, uh, bandwidth or something like that, or some some application is not behaving correctly inside that network, but it's behaving correctly outside of the network, like overall network, or maybe it's not correcting correctly, uh, working correctly on one floor because maybe that machines are connected to that one switch. You would be using tools such as Wireshark like this to break things down because you need to really go into deep, like what's going on uh, with these packets. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong, Kamran. That's yes, how exactly. you guys cannot get into right? And thank you very much. You just gave me an idea so I can give them uh, the real uh, scenario. Why basically we use uh, uh, the, the Wireshark in our production environment. So if just I filter out TCP, have you ever heard about one attack that is known as if somebody can explain what is this? Isn't that when a lot of uh, DOS attacks, isn't that when uh, a lot of packets are sent to a, I don't know if it's a machine or a network. Yes, you're right. To you're try right. to overcrowd it. Exactly. This basically means we, if, if some server is running, basically it stands for denial of services. And you know, it, the name suggests denying for something. Okay, uh, let's suppose we have a Google server and we are trying to reach Google server. But sometimes have you uh, come across with the, this situation that you are trying to access this server, but it is not available? Yes. Yes. And that 99% of the time happened using the denial of services. And what denial of services connected with is basically the TCP. The attacker is sending sync packets repeatedly. And the Google server is sending back sync app in reply. But our attacker is, you know, uh, intelligent enough or can say the evil enough. He is using, he is not using acknowledgement in the return. Okay, so just these things are being sent. Sync, sync, act, sync, sync, act, sync. This is how it is going to send the millions and millions of packets in just a, in a fraction of a second, uh, just to avoid the services for the uh, any server. So if some uh, user is trying to connect, uh, let's suppose he's trying to buy, purchase some stuff from the Amazon services, but uh, some attacker has attacked with the help of denial of services. Uh, the user cannot access Amazon server. And that's the common thing that you're going to come across when companies don't have a solution for, um, you know, D DOS or DDOS. That's another thing. Exactly. So if you don't, if you don't have that solutions to stop it, then you would be dealing with this type of issue as a network engineer. You're like, oh, you know, hey, yeah, our network is being hit by, you know, so many sync attacks that, our server just is exhausted and I need to block an IP address. So you would go into, but of course we have more advanced tools to counter that, but Wireshark can then help you more even like, okay, how many syncers are open at this? Yes. And then you can notice in the, in the destination uh, that, you know, uh, some or from the source that one particular source is sending uh, this sync and sync and packet frequently. This is how you're going to diagnose in a packet tracer. There is something happening. Okay. 
Make sense? I'm sorry, what's the difference between a DOS attack and a DDoS? Okay. Uh, the DDoS uh, denial of services basically when we have a sim single machine and we are trying to attack some other server from a single location or single device. But in case of DDoS, which is distributed denial of services, uh, you know, this is very like a uh, uh, advanced concept, but no problem. Uh, we create Sorry. the bot. You don't we have to answer. We can go back no. to it in the future <laughs> if it's too okay, much. Okay, that's fine. Just I'm giving you a little info, no problem, uh, because Crystal uh, can understand. She has a very good, you know, men mentality and mashallah, she is great. So we have distributed denial of services uh, where we uh, basically create our, these zombies and we have multiple, you know, these zombies in place and that will basically act like a evil, evil machines. And they will also participate in denial of service attack. Okay. And then we have multiple these zombies. We have multiple devices. They all will be attacking to the same server, which will make them DDoS. Make sense? Got it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, and this is something. Uh, if we will later on, when when it comes to troubleshooting our security sides of, because we're going to do another security session on. That's something we're going to cover a little more detail. Like we we probably show you some third party tools that are kind of these days modern tools that we use for stopping such things, or you'll be working as an engineer. So that's something we'll cover. Okay, so we were talking about the TCP. Let's talk about the UDP. You have to do nothing. Just replace TCP with the UDP and hit enter. So as we can see, we have the UDP packets. So just select any of the single packet. And this we have already just discussed that this is layer two, this is layer three, but we are more specific to this user datagram protocol. As you can see, nothing is going on in UDP because this is fast. It has source port, it has destination port, and that's it. And some checksum. As opposed to the TCP, which has like sequencing, acknowledgement, windowing, and you know, everything is happening in that. So that is one of the reasons this is fast because nothing is going on inside the UDP. Okay. So this was the basic demonstration of TCP versus UDP. I hope you get it. I get it. Thank you. Yeah, that was That's a very good explanation. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So let's start again. The same thing that uh, was happening, basically, I just demonstrated here. This client is sending a sync packet. It received, and it just sent back the sync at it just sent back the sync at it the connection has been established at this moment now it sent back the final acknowledgement so it can also establish after that the information will be sent ethernet burst topology please if somebody can explain what is burst topology Bus topology is a type of net network, I guess physical topology, but uh, that all machines are connected. Okay, what other like topologies do we have? Star, mesh, uh, ring. Yes, you're, you're right. So, uh, you know why I added this uh, slide in this uh, uh, session, All, although the bus topology has been obsolete, because, uh, you know, although this is very old technology or the concept, but still when you will go into the uh, interview section, they will be asking so many questions like what is CSMS slash CD? What is back of timer? What is jam signal? Although they have nothing to do with in a real production environment, you're not gonna uh, go, uh, do some implementation with it, with this one, but they just want to judge uh, or estimate that you have already a good idea and 
concept about these topologies and these things. So that is the reason I added this uh, slide. So let's talk about this one very quickly. Uh, this is also known as a single backbone cable. This cable is also known as single backbone cable. And backbone means we have this only single cable, if it is damaged from any place, these all host machines will not be communicate with each other. So that's why it is called backbone. And by the way, backbone term is also used in the switches as well. And which is nothing but when we have two switches connected with a crossover cable, this cable is also, or this connection is also known as the backbone cable. Then it used the concept of CSMA slash CD, which is carrier sense multiple access with collision, collision detection. And what is it? Carrier sense means they will send some kind of, for example, this two wants to communicate with a four. It will send some kind of carrier on this cable to sense if there is any other device already sending the information at the same time. So we have multiple access. If it is sending, then we need to avoid the or detect the collision. So in this demo, for example, this two wants to communicate with the four, it will send this carrier to this cable. As you can see, it sent the, and then it received to the, uh, sorry. And then it received by the destination. This concept is called as CSMA slash CD. And then what is back of timer? As it's mentioned, it's written, if the channel is not clear, the node waits for a random time of period. It means if, the, if, if it, this guy is already sending information to this computer, the all other computers will be back off for some time of period. Okay, so this two can send the information to four and after that, then this will be available, av available to send the information. And similarly, the jam signal is 32 bit binary pattern sent by data station to the inform that the other station of the collision and they must be, must not transmit. So uh, jam signal is, for example, if uh, some collision happens, then after some time they need to wait for some time of period or uh, the concept is known as jam signal, they would wait uh, so the path is clear, okay? And here I just, uh, I'm just showing, uh, this is a collision domain when two computers trying to send the information and it is collided at the same time. So the collision is happening. And this is one single collision domain. Uh, although we are going to talk about switches a lot in detail, but just uh, I added this slide so we can have better idea. And you know, in uh, because uh, in uh, your next modules, in the same module week one, uh, you are going to hit switches as well. So that's why this will be very beneficial for you to understand. Um, how switch switches and what is backplay? When we talk about the switches backplane, this is very technical term or vocabulary we use in our working environment. What is the backplane of this device? What is the backplane of router? What is the backplane of this uh, switch? Basically, we are talking about how it is going to handle the information. Opposed to switch, we have a hub. And we are no hub is a very dump device. Whatever the information it received, it just spit it out. Next time the same information is coming, again, it is gonna spit it out. So that's why this hub is called a dump device. Switches, they are considered to be the manageable devices. 
and the manageability lies in this back plane. Okay. So what is the deal with the back plane? As it is written, first of all, they do not use the concept of uh, CSMS slash CD. Why? Because it is not bus kind of topology. Like if it is like one single cable in a switch back plane, I'm talking about the back plane. If this switch has this one, this one back plane main cable or whatever the wiring or whatever the manufacturing is, uh, this uh, port is connected directly to this uh, cable. This is connected, this, this one is connected, this, this one is connected, this. So if this computer wants to send information, it will go through the same bus and the collision will happen. But as you can see, for this path, we are using a separate path. And for this uh, communication, we are using a separate path. And this is called the back plane. And this is kind of, you know, star kind of, star topology kind of back plane. And that's why there is not so many collision domains. And they don't use the concept of CSMA slash CD, like the hub use or the bus topology use. They use a table inside their memory called camp table. So I was saying, what is the deal with the, uh, with this uh, back plane? What makes it so intelligent? They use kind of table that keeps the information of these all computers in their memory. If I can show you, as you can see, uh, let's suppose this one is uh, port number zero and this one is one and this one is two. One is connected, this quad A computer is connected to the port number one and quad B, 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 B is connected to the port number two. The switch is intelligent enough, it will create a kind of table inside its memory, which is known as content addressable memory. As you can see, the port one is connected with MAC address A, 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 which is our host A machine. And the port two is connected with the MAC address, which is computer B. So our switch is wise enough to know at what port, what computer is attached with. So if I, if I can show you with the animation, as you can see, if our this computer wants to communicate, uh, if this computer wants to communicate with our printer, it is has a it has a separate path to follow, so it will not collide it with any other computer. So in, in, with, in other in other terms, also that uh, hey friend Crystal, like you can manage specific ports. That's the switch capability, where you can go into the specific port and say. I want that printer to be connected to this specific, this specific port in this switch. You can do that. And that what makes switch powerful from hub that you can actually go in and manage these specific, like specific ports, right? Exactly. And in week three module, you are going to touch this concept as well. You are going to assign a specific port to some specific VLAN or with a specific uh, computer device, which can connect uh, or communicate with a specific VLAN. So uh, this is just like, uh, you know, uh, some advanced topic, but just uh, to give you information that you are going to come across with this very soon. Okay. So far so good. Okay, that's great. Uh, but there is one drawback in uh, switches, although it is, is manageable, but they have one broadcast domain. And one, what broadcast domain is, whenever this, uh, com uh, this computer is going to communicate with this printer, it is gonna hit all computers. So this is the shortcoming of a switch, but this can be overcome using the VLANs. 
which you, you are going to learn maybe in a week three module and a lot in detail in the ccna i hope this is uh, this is uh, uh, you have already got the idea about this uh, slide so let's uh, move on to the next slide uh as i also asked uh, the question in the quiz what is uh, likewise devices and what is unlike devices unlikewise devices so basically this is what i was talking about this is likewise devices so this section is about the cabling straight versus crossover and another concept we are going going to hit is mdix midix so these are the likewise devices where we have switch communicating with the switch directly uh, we have uh, a hub communicating with the hub router communicating with a router and even though router and computer also considered to be a likewise devices so do not think like this the box is different and this box is different no but their method methodology methodology to communicate with each other is just like a likewise they act like same for example this is we call router and this thing is also kind of router so these are likewise devices so what is the deal here the deal is when we connect these two likewise devices we always going to use crossover cable and whenever we going to use unlikewise devices like switches here router here these are totally two different devices we are going to use straight through cables okay then what is the deal with midix media dependent interface crossover what is this thing then you know these days our uh, devices are intelligent enough the cables are same these cables are same manufactured at the same method they were manufacturing before but what is the, the the difference now these switches have some kind of port which is midix enabled and what does it mean midix enabled you know these days you do not have a time to go to the market and buy a crossover specific cable just to connect these two devices nobody has a time so engineers what they did they created this mdix media independent dependent interface crossover connector what our kind of cable you are going to connect uh midix enabled devices for example this switch has midix enabled uh port and this also take this straight through cable bring it over here and connect it it is not crossover cable but Medix is intelligent enough to know that what is connected on the other side of my end. So it will like it will auto negotiate. It will auto negotiate the other end, and now uh, it will be familiar that now this this is same device. So I'm gonna make this cable as a crossover cable. And if you are connecting uh, the router here. and router is intelligent sorry not the router but the switch is intelligent enough the mid x is enabled here it will get an idea that the other end is router so uh, it will become the straight through cable okay make sense so uh, i'm going to summarize that just to make sure i understood the concept but okay. basically uh, mdix or midix media dependent interface is like let's say an application on the devices that is going to understand okay. that it's different i don't know if i got that correct uh okay. just a minute just i try to answer uh, for you yeah, yeah. go ahead i think that is a device that we put on the switch or root router and it help us to put whatever cable you can put either straight through either crossover it will it will do the conversion to make the device work so it's a so it's a 
device. It's not an application. It, yeah, it's like a like on that. So back in the days, we didn't have that. So now you have this device that this this is an additional feature added to these two devices. So then it it it's not dependent on what cable you have to buy. And kind of like that was how why people got a little annoyed that hey, I had to really go buy and crossover cables for these devices to work. Now I don't need to. I can just get this device and enable it on this uh, switcher router and then make it work on the same cable, basically. Kamran, I think your voice, we just lost your voice. Uh, is this yeah, same for me? Yeah, it's far away. Oh, sorry. Very sorry about that. No, okay, sorry. now it's clear? Yep, yeah. clear. Okay, so Medix basically, a uh, very good question asked. It is basically a hardware, actually a port inside your router or the switch. But behind the scene, there is a software. Okay, so whatever means, uh, you know, Cisco, if we talk about the Cisco switches, we talk about the Cisco routers, they are hardware vendors. But inside, they have very intelligent software which is running and taking the decisions. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. So the answer to my question was it's both hardware and software. Yeah. Huh. Okay. okay. That's fine. Cool. And then we can distinguish uh, between straight through cable and the crossover cable just by looking at this. As you can see, uh, this is just like the Xerox copy of this one. So as you can see, this color coding, and you have already gone through in uh, uh, the week one module, I think, or uh, I think, or in the connector uh, section, you are going to hit this. Uh, Topic, but this you can see, you know, the same combination we are going to use here, and the same combination we are going to use here. So this information uh, I'm sharing because uh, maybe in a future you are going to create one straight to cable. And on opposed to the straight, we have crossover cable. Whatever we have here, it is going to twist. So whatever we have have here, it will be the opposite here. So this is how you can represent, or you can you know quickly uh, judge that this one is crossover cable and this one is straight through cable. Okay, uh, we have straight through cable, we have uh, crossover cable, and then we have another very important piece of cable, which is called the console cable. Can anyone tell me what is it? Or what it is it used for? So, Crystal or hey, for anyone, if I give you a brand new switch right now and I want you to configure it, how would you do that? Um, connections from, I don't know, uh, let's say a laptop or sorry, uh, like a PlayStation to the TV. That would use mm -hmm. a console cable, correct? Or a laptop. Exactly. To You're right. Whatever. You're right. Same concept. Mm -hmm. We have almost the same concept. That is called in term of technical vocabulary. Whenever I will write TV, it means technical vocabulary. This thing is called provisioning. Let's suppose you are just hired in a um, an orga organization working as IT engineer, and you are given with the one brand new Cisco device. And they ask you to do a provisioning. And what provisioning is basically, you are going to do nothing but just provide a basic configuration on this router or the switch. So this thing is called provisioning. And this is happened through the cable called console cable. It can be done through many way ways, but this is the first and the foremost uh, method we will be using. So, so because you guys are coming from a support background, it's like Haifa and Christel, it's like you getting into a business and they give you a brand new computer and now you need to configure that machine from scratch. And, and the first thing is what? You're configuring that machine on a work group domain, right? It's not joined to a domain. It doesn't have all the security, nothing like that. But you're getting in somehow, right? By turning it on, and you need to getting it, get get into that because now you got all the plugs connected, and then the operating system. If the machine have operating system, great. If not, then you will actually have to install that and configure it, right? 
So the concept of in Cisco is exactly the same way. You are using this cable, a laptop and a brand new uh, Cisco router or switch for provisioning. This means that you're gonna have to configure everything from scratch from the day it's restart or start the whole, uh, you know, iOS basically. Yes, great. So this cable is also known as the rollover cable. This is the another name of console cable. And you must keep it just like a wallet. If you just like you keep the wallet and you must keep this cable always with you because you require, you need this all the time. So basically what is it and what, how, what we do with this one? Uh, the color is the baby blue color. It has a baby blue color. One end is connected RJ45 port. The other end has the DB9 female connector. This thing will go inside your router or the switch. And this end will go into your, sorry, sorry for that. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna tell you that is the other <laughs> way. Okay. Sorry. The other way around. This thing is gonna go into your router or the switch because it has kind of ethernet port connector kind of thing. You will plug this thing inside your router and this thing DB9 female into your laptop. Okay. And then once it is connected, then we have kind of software inside running in your laptop could be telnet or it, you know, it has its own, we have some other Terra term, uh, putty, these multiple, we have multiple software, I don't want to discuss here. Uh, with the help of that, you can access the brain of this router or the switch. And why did I add this cable here? So can you tell me these days, does your com computer have this port? DB, this is DB9 female, so but it will be, it will be the right side. So look at the right image, that little uh, triangle, a rectangle that you have right there. Yes, this one. And so, so, I mean, I'm sure you won't find that these days, right? Ava and uh, Crystal, you, you don't see this in a computer anymore. No. It, on your desktop, desktop computer, you might get this one. Maybe, maybe. Even then. But, uh, yes. Hard. But in the laptops, never, ever. Yeah, laptops new... are definitely gone. Okay. So, what is the solution and what is the remedy for that then? Then we have this uh, kind of cable which is known as serial to USB kind of cable. You will be given this cable. Then what you will do, you will attach this DB9 male connector with your DB9 female. And you have tons and tons of USB ports in your laptop. You will connect this thing with the laptop. Then one thing very important, this is called serial com ports on your computers. Okay. You have to debug sometime. This is uh, maybe this connection is com three, but you are connecting using com two. So it will not uh, communicate because your connected port is com three and how you can identify this uh, by going into the device manager uh, of your computer. And then you can go into the COM port section and you can see what port is enabled. We will do it. Don't worry about this. We will do it later on. But just I'm giving you overview that what happens basically. If you find some problem, then uh, you need to troubleshoot these COM ports. And then we have these old devices, uh, these cables, and this is long gone. And this DB9 may female is going to connect with the male and then this one is going to connect directly to the uh, uh sorry this is your pc basically this is your computer so this is going to into your desktop computer and this is going into your router and this is how you can access the brain of this 
uh, of this your router, okay? And and in once you when we finish this uh, meeting in the Discord, I am gonna send you in reference to this slide. I'm gonna send you a video that I did. What he just explained everything like visually. I'm showing a real router, real configuration. So I will I will send you that video. So it's gonna give you that little visual understanding as well. Yeah, that's that will be awesome. So let's move to the next slide, uh, which is going to be a lab. So are you ready for the lab, the ping tool? Yes. Okay, how many of you are familiar with the ping tool? Me. Okay, uh, I, I I guess this is from... Uh, uh, if half I say that she doesn't, if she's not familiar with them, I'm no, taking her time away. <laughs> now you will be, <laughs> because ping tool, you will like uh, sleep and uh, I know. wake up, e pinging sleep every and shower. Oh, yes. thinking of things. Yes. Yep. So this, you know, uh, just don't take like this, uh, like the simplicity of this tool. Uh, we use this even in the CCI labs. This is uh, the basic tools, but very important to consider to be a very important tool in our networking environment. And as a network administrator, uh, personally, I have been using ping tool all the time, all day long, I'm using ping. So uh, let's talk about a little bit about the ping tool. Then we will hit the lab. It comes under the protocol called ICMP. Uh, because we are going to uh, check the reachability of this ICMP protocol. The ping is a command prompt utility used to test the uh, ability of the source computer to reach the destination. So let's suppose we have two computers connected with each other with any mode. I have no idea whether it's switch, route, or whatever. And they have some kind of IP addresses. I want to see whether this computer, this one is alive or not. This computer is there on my network or not. This could be the PC. This could be my server. This could be even my access point. Because all devices have some kind of identification, which is IP. So with the help of ping tool, I'm just going to hit this device with a ping tool. And this device is going to give me a reply back saying that I'm alive. So this is how, instead of going to that computer, that is maybe some far away in a floor two and you are in a floor one, instead of I will go into the computer and I will see everything is working fine in that computer, uh, this computer is on or not. I just try to ping that computers directly from my floor one. And if I receive the reachability, it means that computer is alive. It has some options available. We will discuss a lot in detail in this uh, uh, demo. And we will talk when we'll hit these options. Uh, let's go to the uh, demo and then we will talk about these error messages as well. Then this will make sense. And I'm going to share. Uh, can you see this one? The command prompt? No, I just see this slide. Okay, okay, okay. Whiteboard. Um, I'm not uh, familiar with this tool, Zoom, basically. Uh, Danish, can you please help me with the... Uh, I just want to show how you can uh, access command prompt. Uh, what, how can so I give you, access? When you do share, like on the, on the screen, when you click on share, you should be able to pick specific application. So are you just sharing your uh, PowerPoint right now? Okay, well, that's fine. You, okay. Okay, yeah, no problem. You're, you're I'm sharing a whole desktop right now. I think you can open it. Yep, we can see it. Okay, that's fine. Okay, I will go to the command prompt and I will. Can you see the command prompt? Wait, you can see. I can't see. It. No, I cannot see the command prompt. So I think you, you have the command prompt open on a second screen. You may have to bring it on the left side. Do you have two two monitors? 
No, I have one. Okay, okay. So, min, so open on the bottom. Click on the command prompt. We can see this. It's on your desk uh, taskbar. Click on the command prompt. No. There you go. We can mm. see that. Okay, that's fine. So I hope everybody is familiar with the the command prompt. What is it? Yes. It is it is pre-installed in uh, your uh, Windows machines. And even in the Linux as well. Um, in the Linux, we sometimes call it shell or con console. Uh, and in Windows environment, we call it a command prompt. If you type on your search bar and type a command prompt or just type CMD, you will find this black console kind of application. Just click on that. Okay, so. Um, First of all, I give you the scenario. I have uh, my device, which is connected on IP 192.168.100.3. Then for this demo, I'm using my access point or the modem, which is connected at 192.168.100.1. So let's try pinging my access point, first of all. So I want to see end-to-end -end reachability. Type ping, then the IP address of the device, which is in question, which is my access point. So type 192.168.100.1, which is the address of my access point and click. As you can see, we it will generate uh, one, two, three, four replies basically saying your access point is alive and it is giving me reply. So I have reachability end to end with the access point. In the same fashion, if you have 100 devices attached in your lo local area network and you want to see the reachability, you can just do pinging all these devices one by one. One, two, three, four to check the connectivity. Then if I want to go a lot in detail, what else ping can do? Just type ping, then hyphen or minus with a question mark and hit enter. It is going to show me another option, what else I can do with this ping command. As it is mentioned minus T, let's see what it does. So I am not gonna go all, a lot in detail about these all everything, what is it is doing. But just the important options that we most often use in our working environment, like minus T. If I ping the same my access point device with the help of option minus T and type 192.168.100.1 and hit enter. Before my reply stopped at the fourth point, but now as you can see, it is on and on and on. It is just keep pinging that device. Why we need this minus T option? Because we want to keep, because this is giving me a reply, but sometimes it happens, some device is not, not giving me reply. If it is not giving a reply, it will be like this. Let's suppose we have 55. Now you can see the reply from this uh, device saying destination host unreachable. So it means this is unreachable. Now with the help of minus T, I kept my, uh, this ping uh, on continue. So, you know, so I just kept continue my ping. So why? Because then I will go to the another device, which is not giving me reply. I will try to find the solution and as soon as I will start to see the replies coming from that device, it means it is uh, uh, there is end-to-end uh, -end connectivity. So that's why we keep minus T options that will just keep pinging that device all the time. Then we have some another options. Type minus and question mark. Then we have minus A resolve address to host name. 
first of all i try to ping my own computer which is on 192168100.3 So it is giving me giving me a very simple reply, and I I'm totally blind at this time. I have no idea this reply is coming from which device. What is the name of device? Because we know these devices by name. So minus a option basically going to give me the information about the PC as well. So the name of my computer is Cyber PC. So just by looking at this uh, name i will know that okay this computer this belongs to this so you can have like in a real production environment let's suppose you have four or five servers uh in your uh, it closet and then you can ping those devices but you have no idea what that server is for let's suppose one server is running uh your hotel management application another server is running uh SQL server, server, another one is running, let's suppose, uh, uh, your finance application. So with, because you have given some kind of name to this, I'm sure. So with the help of minus A and type the IP of that device and hit enter, you will see the name of that device. That's so a really, how... really great example because if you guys remember, uh, remember we did like a hot seat and we were like, hey, if you have the IP address for the domain, but then how would you know the domain, like the server name of that domain, right? Like, because you want to know about what is the actual name of that domain. How would you yes. know that? And this would be a really nice command, a one, one command to, to get that, right? Yes. I'm not getting reply from Hefa. Hefa, are you there? Oh, yeah, sorry, I said yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's fine. Okay, let's go uh, some another options. Yes. Um, then what else? Uh, this is the number of uh, pings we can send. For example, uh, I want to send just one ping just for some purpose. Oh, sorry. Uh, you have to mention how many pings you want to send after minus n. As you can see, it just send one ping. Okay, so there could be some reason, valid reason, uh, uh, the purpose that we want to send only one ping. So this thing. Can so come on, can we use can we use this uh, specific one for less a cabling issue? I know that sometimes there's a cable issue, and we we want to run a command for long time to see if the cable is fully working is this the command that you would prefer as a network engineer to use or the other ones exactly this uh ping minus n um, you know there is no any specific reason using minus n but the one that is most being used is minus t it will kept pinging and we can see like you know if i show the my internet connectivity right now if I try to ping minus T with the help of 4.2.2.2, so basically it kept on pinging and I can correlate with my TTL and times. If there is any kind of delay, I can see here. Can, can you explain to us or for Haifa and Christelle, how, how, okay. does, how do you de determine these MS? What does this gives us, us any information if it okay. says, MS this much or TTL this much, yeah, how yeah. would you- so I will not touch this TTL part because we are going to cover next. Okay. So we will be specific to this time. These are the time slots, basically is trying, trying to hit this device in this millisecond. It means my first packet went in 147 millisecond, it hit that server and returned back. Again, 147, 147, it means my internet connectivity is so stable. But as you can realize here, hit something happened. It hit 140, 58 milliseconds. It means some kind of application which is running in my background. Maybe it is taking some kind of data. So this is one a very good method 
you know to identify your internet connectivity as well sometime you will find that reply is coming then there is no reply request time out reply again coming then again request time out reply is coming again request time out so this is a very pure identification that there is going something happening in your uh uh with the either access point or with a cabling or with the network interface card so this kind of troubleshooting you can do with the help of this ping minus p command clear thank you yes sir okay that's great then we have some another options these i'm not going to tell these are so advanced uh uh then this is also very informative which is saying source address to use okay uh i think i have removed that so we have this uh a simple topology where we have a server and we have a host machine and i am trying to send a ping but you have multiple interface cards connected to this host machine like in my case i have one wireless lan i have one for lan i have one for vmware one for virtual machine for virtual machine 2 so what if i want to ping this server not using my default lan interface card but from my wireless lan then this thing will help us minus s which is basically telling me from which source you are gonna ping so let's do this example here live uh let's suppose if i go to ip config slash all to see all of my ips and let's pick uh, the ip let's this one 192.168.42.1 and if i want to ping i will type minus s with uh this uh, as a source which is uh Yes, this one, and I will try to ping my access point. So this is going to be my source, and this is going to be my destination. But if you notice earlier, I was trying to ping uh, from the same subnet, from my LAN device, basically the LAN network interface card. but this time i am trying to uh, sourcing from the v vm machine but there is kind of some uh, let's say some uh, requirement that i want my vm where to access my access point so you can use minus s option with the help of this um, vm net ip address to ping this uh, access point so let's try pinging does it work or not as you can see transmit failed because uh, um, my router does not have any information about this one but if i will do the same thing with the same subnet oh sorry and and the ip of my device is 100.3 this time i try to ping as you can see the reply is coming because my whole uh, access point has information about this subnet so i am changing the source before we had vmware and you can clearly see uh, the difference between these two ips so i am sourcing from different location basically if i try to go some other option and i am not going to go uh, 
do the demo for this one. If you have uh, IPv4, this is by default, we will type minus four. And in case of IP6, what if we want to ping IPv6 addresses? We can use like my ping minus six. And then this uh, very long IPv6 address, something like this. And then you can ping this address. Okay, so the demo for your ping section ends here. If you have any question, you may ask. Hello? No, we're good. Okay. I'm not getting any replies, so that's why I'm concerned. That everyone is there or no? No, no, we're Or I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay, that's fine. When you don't hear a reply like that, you can move on then. Okay, that's fine. Well, sometimes it happens that there is internet connect connection issues. Maybe uh, I'm connected, but you are not. So that's why, you know, I just want some echo from you. Okay, so the ping has, uh, we have done. Okay, so uh and again this the i think for you guys you you should after this you know try to ping your own home network try to understand because you have such a good example right there you have so many devices you have a router at your home because you're going to have to start with extreme basics like that to understand your even your home network that level of ping a ping jss website try to ping it for a long time, try to understand what's like, you know, the time, things like that. And after this, you should be doing your own research. They do a lot on ping side because it's great to get started like this. But again, you're always going to be as a network engineer, going to be using the same concept, even in routing, even in switching, you have to do ping uh, other devices for, for you to do your work. You will have to do that from their devices as well. But that's where I think you guys should start with extreme basics, move up to your home network. And then after that, when you start the packet tracers and all that kind of stuff and your labs, you should be then using, uh, you know, same, same method, same concepts in those type of devices as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we come across some another uh, error messages you need to understand. One is destination host unreachable versus request time now. So most often you come across these errors so, so you must have an idea what what is the different difference between these two host unreachable basically when we are on the same network let's suppose in my case we are running 192.168.100.x x means whatever the host may identification number you can do for one two three all the way up to 254 you can assign so if i'm trying to ping uh, some ip within this subnet i'm going to receive host unreachable it means we are on the same subnet but maybe this computer is maybe dead uh, maybe shut down or maybe there is cable issue, network interface card issue. Okay, so you are going to receive unreachable. Request timeout when you are not on the same subnet. And this subnet does not exist in this domain. These kind of errors you're gonna receive. And we will discuss, you know, you don't need to worry about this. We will go a lot in detail when we'll, in a router and switches, we will be pinging, you will see several kind of errors there and these just i'm giving you i just uh fly by overview the difference between these two then this packet loss uh, it gives the it gives you the information how many packets have been lost like in this case you can see two packets lost it means there is kind of some issue in your lan environment if you are pinging lan environment if you are pinging your device that is in the your same LAN environment, then I'm sure this is a problem with your 
cable, either with a cable, with your network interface card, or there's some kind of loops happening in your local area network. Similarly, if you are trying to ping uh, the Google that is not in your domain, if you receive this kind of errors, like as I said earlier, reply is coming, then there is request timeout. Then reply is coming, request timeout. It means you have some kind of serious internet connectivity is going on in your, uh, uh, your uh, working environment. Okay. Okay. So let's move on. Uh, the other tool we're going to use is the trace tracer tool, also known as trace route tool. And what it does, trace route is a network diagnostic tool used to track in a real time the pathway taken by the packet on an IP network from source all the way to the destination. In a very plain English, what does it mean? We have host A here and some host B is somewhere for location. We have multiple routers in between and we will use this tracer tool to find out how far away this device is from us. So in this case, it's gonna give me reply three. One, two, and three, and then it is gonna hit the destination. So the tool is very simple, it is, but it is very useful. Why? Let's suppose your, this router is down. First, you will do ping. Ping will tell that host is unreachable. Then your second tool, which is tracer, is going to be very handy. When you will apply tracer, it will hit this one. It will hit this interface because this is still working. Only I'm talking about this interface is down. So immediately the reply will come from or will say the two. It means after reaching the second uh, device, we cannot go beyond. So it means it is a clear indication that we have somewhere the problem lies somewhere inside in this router and in this boundary. So let's do the, uh, the demo for the tracer. So let's go to the, again, command prompt. I hope it is visible, the command prompt, yeah? Yep. yep. Okay, so you will type T-R-A-C-E-R-T -E tracer and the desired address. Let's suppose uh, we want to trace out how many, uh, how far job Skillshare server is from us. That's my basement right there. There you go. <laughs> but this is very simple. It's going to take so long. So I will go to some another option. So here you can see this is uh, 192.16.100.1, which is my gateway. Yes, my gateway or in simple term is my access point, the router. Then this router is connected somehow with the ISP, maybe the router. And this is going to the interface of this router. Then this router is connected with some another router on this interface. And this is going to be the uh, IP address for that. So it went how far? Three hops. One, two, and three. 
Now, in a real world example, you would use something like this. And Kamran, you can correct me. If you have a big building with four floors, four floors each have its separate switches. And let's say on the bottom floor, something happened and machines are not able to go outside. And you would use some type of command like this, like tracer, which yeah. then you can, you can find out which switch on that floor is then having an issue, right? Yeah, uh, or exactly. a router. Uh, yeah, I just want, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that is, so you, you can continue, you can continue. Yeah, and another example that I can give you guys that sometimes companies are using a, you know, two connections for companies because you don't want to rely on one connection. So if one com one goes down and let's say one is a uh, fast connection, another one's a backup and a slow connection, sometimes a lot of people complain, oh, uh, we are, we can't use internet, uh, it's so slow. And this way you could use a tracer to find out if your connections are actually going to the slow router or the fast exactly. one. Yeah. You could find that because of these commands. Just keep this in mind. There are different scenarios you can use this uh, command like that, okay? Yeah, that is very great example. Thank you, Danish. Another thing I want to clarify here, uh, just Danish mentioned the switches. Sometimes, uh, you know, the switches, they are, the dumb devices, they don't have IPs, okay? So sometimes the tracer will not work for these switches. If we have, let's say, we have multiple switches connected, like a daisy chain fashion, and I will run tracer command from this machine to this destination, it is gonna tell me you are one hop away because it will not consider these switches as routers because they don't have any kind of IP connectivity and it will not consider these like the bumps in the wire. If we have the routers here, then yes, this is three hops away. But these days switches are intelligent enough, you can have switch plus the router inside that device. It is works as a switch as well as a router, then in that case, if we have these things, then it will show the three hops. I hope you get it. Yep, thank you. That was a good example because some people may not know that, yeah, you can, have, when, you, when, you, when people ask you about that, oh, didn't I mm -hmm. hear that there are switches on layer three? That's what he's talking about that. <laughs> uh, yeah. The new one comes with that capabilities. It's not that the whole switch is like a router, it's just the capabilities being added to it. Yes, right. Okay, then we can go in detail about tracer and the same method way we did with the ping, tracer minus, minus and the question mark, and you will see there is not much going on in the tracer as opposed to the ping. So we will be using only this, I think. Yeah, that's it. And then we can use the source address the same way that we uh, did for uh, um, in the ping, but this will go for the IPv6 only, as you can see. So uh, I did research and I did www.jobskillshare.org and uh, sorry. There's a typo in there. Uh, research, then jobskillshare.org. Yeah, as you can see, it is taking so long here. Why? Because it is trying to uh, resolve the DNS the name of that, uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, name of this host machine. So every time it hit this device, it's trying to resolve the name. This we don't, do not want. So what is the solution for that? You want to process tracer uh, very fast with the help of minus D. And it is clearly mentioning here, do not resolve address to host. So the same thing we're gonna, um uh, do with the help of minus d command and you will see the difference you can type minus d option here and now as you can see this is much more quicker than before now we can clearly see how far jobs get share or this from us another thing very important here did you notice these statics? Whenever you come across this static, it doesn't mean that this device is not responding. This device is responding, but basically there is kind of firewall device 
is installed that is denying these icm pipings uh, to hit this uh, host machine so this is for the security mechanism so since you know this uh, job sketch here i think this is located in somewhere in united states and it is far 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 away from us in pakistan as you can see there is a lot of routers basically these all routers these things can we say that now it it took some type of path or a best path or is that a correct term to use Come exactly on. you can use uh, for example uh, you can uh, uh, if job skip share has multiple servers okay then it is not going to use always the same path maybe it will use some different path it find it better than the other one so from here you can also um, see that sometime you are hitting less routers than before okay okay sorry i'm eating yes okay so i just uh, i press control plus C uh, to disconnect this one because it is taking so long. So this is preset command. And as I said, this is very helpful tool. Uh, when you have multiple, uh, when you have multiple devices in between like routers, and we have no idea which device, for example, this one is uh, disconnected or shut down, uh, then we have reachability all the way up till this if, if I'm trying to ping from this. So this is how I'm going to uh, imagine that uh, we have the problem somewhere in this router. So that is where Tracer tool is being used. And this is very helpful in your day-to-day -day, uh, working environment. OK, so let's move on to the next slide, uh, which is net stat tool uh you can consider this is like the monitoring tool but in a low end like in our computers we can run netstat tool and basically what it is the netstat is a command utility utility used to display current network connection and the port activity on your computer what does it mean it means uh whatever the connectivity or the connections is going through from from my computer or coming to my computer, I can see what ports it is connected with, uh, whether I'm using Chrome, uh, what other applications like we have Discord, we have Skype, what kind of connections are connected on my computers right now. We can take a look from using NetStack too. So let's go into the demo. Let's clear the screen. If I will do simply net stat without any option, as you can see, it is saying active connections. What protocol my connection is using? TCP. What is the local address of my system? 192.168.100.3. And it is showing me the port address, which is, I told you, this is the random port. And it is not well known port. It is the state is established, and is it, it is connected with a foreign address, which is which is located somewhere far from my computer. Uh, and this is the IP, which is going to be the public IP, and this is connected with a triple eight three. Maybe this is the, like the well known port, but it is very slow. Again, the problem is it is trying to resolve the host or the DNS information. So what is the remedy? The same way we can go next step minus question mark. And then we can come here, display the address, sorry. Displays addresses and port number in numerical form. Let's try again with that minus N and hit enter. As you can see, very quickly it processed, which were, it was going to take time here. So we can see the same information. Uh, 
that connection is established, we have multiple local connections uh, from the different ports going to the well-known ports, like 443 is a well-known port. 80 is a well-known port. This is secure, non-secure, 443 is secure, and 80 is non-secure. Now I want to go one step further, and I want to convert these into the names. I don't want, I don't know, for example, I'm very, uh, at a very basic level, I have no idea what 443 stands for. So further you can dig deep and check that stat and type minus question to see which options will enable that for us. Uh, then we have fully qualified DNA, uh, domain names as well. Uh, let's try this minus B. Displays the executable involved in creating each connection listening port. Let's try this one. Minus B. And this minus B option basically is giving me information not only uh, what kind of protocol I'm using, but also what kind of application I'm using. So you can imagine yeah, how this, Mickey... this could be, yeah, this could be a great way to find out if somebody complaining about, you know, hey, I, I'm having a lot of issues. My computer is very slow or my computer is being like, you know, doing weird stuff, but they can't see it, right? This could be a great way to actually run this command and find out if there's a background application that's doing a lot of stuff from exactly. the command line. Exactly. And somebody raised this question as well earlier that uh, um, if I disable or uh, one port out. So as you can see clearly here is Zoom XZ. Zoom, what kind of protocols, uh, the port number it is running as a source and it is using the well-known port HTTPS. So it means Zoom is using a very secure connection. Sorry if uh, I'm getting ahead of myself, but <clears throat> what's the difference between established is, is I think, established direct, is but close weight and time yeah. weight? Okay, so established is basically this is I'm connected with. Okay, this connection is currently established. And these are previous connection which is waiting to close. And similarly, time wait is it has already expired. Like it's wait. I don't understand. Like when you say it's established, you're actively in that session. Eva. Yes. So no, no, I, I get up. that one. Mm -hmm. I just I don't get time wait. Like it's expired. Yes, it is expired. This is like you can say. Consider it like uh, the session that uh, a long ago it happened. Now it is waiting to time out in short. Okay. Yeah, so your computer, your computer is going to keep some kind of, you know, connection to close down. It won't just immediately close everything. Do so you remember we, we, we talked about the sessions? Yeah, like it's go, the session goes out. Yes. There yeah. are several sessions going on and some of them are waiting to time out. Okay. 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 And uh, as I said before, it was giving me information about just the port numbers. Uh, if uh, I'm a newbie, I have no idea what these ports are. I can enable this switch minus B, uh, which is basically going to turn those into the name HTTPS. Along this is also going to give me information on what this is going browser. to be my new favorite. Tool. <laughs> That's great. And also this is going to also tell me, uh, okay, uh, what kind of application is connected? Sorry, Haifa, can you mute yourself? There's a lot of noise coming. <laughs> okay. Let's head over to another switch if we can find something. Mm. Then minus A is going to display all connections and listening ports, even that is not being used. So let's do next tag with the help of minus A. So 
as you can see, this is established. These connections have been established. But just take a look, these are the listening ports. Means my computer is ready to listen on these ports. These all. But this is not a good security practice, by the way. We need to close these ports if these are open. So basically it is telling me that these um, multiple uh, uh, ports are open. And if you want, I can connect and I, I'm listening on these ports actively. Okay. Then what else do we have? Something we can use. Uh, but just FYI, some ports are listening. Uh, they're open for normal like connections for your computer to work with other computers and you know your own local adapter have when you use these 127.0.0.1 that's a loop address right so you you don't yeah. that's not like your open address it may be using just your own adapter to listen to things that is happening inside your computer so yeah, yeah. make sure you guys don't go and start blocking everything you know or <laughs> something will not work then. yes this is just for the verification you know we can check what is happening and what is going on in our network some rogue pc may be connected so you can identify directly just by taking a look of the ip ip and then you can ping and you can resolve that ip to identify what host basically that is okay other than that uh, we have this um, we, we don't use this software but let's try this one net stat minus f uh basically it is going to resolve the fully qualified domain name just like in case of job skill we have www.jobskillshare.org so this is called fqdn so as you can see here uh, maybe somewhere i'm connected to amazon or i think this uh job skill share basically hosted on amazon so as you can see it is giving me a uh, fully qualified DN domain name here. Okay. Then, um, uh, yeah, the, this minus E displays the Ethernet statistics. Uh, if we want to see how many data or the bytes have been received or sent, we can just check from here as well very quickly just by putting minus e option and this is also very good information like how many unicast packets are being sent uh, from your lan interface card how many uh, bytes are sent received and sent how many non unicast packets are sent how many have been discarded or how many are in the error state so this is also could be a very helpful piece of information So I think this is enough for the next set. And almost we touch the important parts of uh, or the options in this next step. So let's head over to the slides. Okay, then we have some other tools like our IP config. Uh, Sometimes uh, we have some DNS issue with the help of IP config slash, uh, slash flush DNS, you are going to flush your DNS information. And you know, I'm going to discuss this thing a lot in your week two module. Then every computer has some kind of MAC addresses or even every network interface card that is attached on your computer has different MAC address. It has different MAC address, it one has different, even your virtual machine has some kind of uh, virtual network interface card, which is having different MAC address. And these all will be uh, unique. So to uh, just to identify, to get those, you very quickly, you can go through this command. And then we have R, uh, R basically will show how many computers um, your, your host machine has learned by the way 
how many metadata it has learned. Maybe you in your LAN environment, we, you know, in the ARP, the ARP is a complete chapter as its own. So we're gonna discuss ARP a lot in detail. And the CC and the switching section is totally dependent on ARP. So what I was uh, showing is uh, we have the LAN environment, we have, let's suppose, 100 computers connected in the same environment with the same subnet, this your host or computer will have the information about these all host machines in using the help of our protocol. Then we have NS lookup. We have one dedicated section uh, talking about NS lookup. We will we'll go a lot in detail. System info is going to give you the information about your computer. And I will, I will de demonstrate this one as well. Route print uh, is just like if you are familiar in a routing environment, we have command show IP route. Which is going to give me information how many best paths do I have. So in a command prompt, you can have route print. My, uh, this greater the sign, if we use in the command prompt, this is also very handy and useful command. For example, if this is a system information, uh, that is a very verbose information, and we want to save this information in my text, so you can use uh, greater than sign and you can save in uh, somewhere in your computer to send to, to some, your friend, or some your boss or colleague in format of the notepad. Then we have five more. Uh, so I will give you a demo then you will have a better idea about this. So let's very quickly, I'm going to give a demo about these uh, each uh, command, but I'm not gonna go a lot in detail because we have already covered so many concepts so you will be confused. I will clear the screen. So IP config, very basic command, and you will use a lot. It will give you the information uh, about what uh, network interface cards you have, like Ethernet adopter I have on a VMware, which is virtual environment. Uh, this is also a virtual environment, and this is my physical local network interface cards. Uh, then we have a wireless, and then these are, um, uh, can say the, what are the IP addressing I'm using on my relevant uh, network interface card. Like on uh, my LAN, I'm using this kind of IP, 192.168.100.3. For my wireless LAN, uh, which is not connected, it is media has been disconnected. For Ethernet adopter, VMware, I'm using these kind of addressing. So very quickly, you can go over and check the IP connectivity. Then you have IP config slash flush DNS. So basically, if I will hit enter, it is going to erase all DNS information that resides in my uh, host machine, which I do not want because I want to keep DNS information. And for the DNS, uh, we have a dedicated section in week uh, two module again. Then the, we have get Mac. If I'll simply press or uh, type get Mac and hit enter, it is very quickly going to give me information about the Mac addresses. But the problem is it is not giving me what this physical address is connected with which interface or which NIC card, net network interface card. To get that, you type get Mac and type slash B, hit enter. If I'll just expand this one. Here you can see my VM virtual is using this physical interface card. Uh, 
uh, physical address or the MAC address, my local area connection or LAN card is using this uh, physical MAC address and my wireless is using this uh, MAC address. So see how quickly uh, you just uh, 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 get the knowledge about the MAC addresses of your uh, network interface cards. So this is also some kind of very handy command. Then we have R. It comes with uh, a lot of uh, options. Let's uh, do with R minus A. And it is going to give me the information uh, what other host machine my computer has learned so far. So in this case, for example, if I give you information, this is my gateway. And this is a physical address that is correlated to my access point. So instead of resolving this MAC address, it will send an ARP and it will receive ARP, reply, and then I will get this MAC address. It already keeps this information saved in its ARP table. Why? When I want to uh, reach my access point, it will go directly to MAC address and just go directly to the access point instead of going through some another process which I'm going to discuss in um, subsequent lectures. As I said, NS Lookup, uh, we have uh, one dedicated section for NS Lookup. But just to um, give you information what it does, if you hit NS Lookup, it is going to give me information what I, my gateway address is connected. And if I want to go a lot in detail, I can go like set type. Uh, I want to know information about the mail exchange server, about some, uh, let's go, uh, like www.jobskillshare.org. If, if I hit enter, it will show me my mail server basically uh, have uh, this uh, name of the server is ns1.cloudfree.net. So this is going to give me the information about my mail exchange server. So not to worry about if you are not getting this at this time, because uh, my intention is just to make sure you have this command in your tool belt. And this is we're gonna discuss a lot in detail in subsequent videos. If you want to exit, just type exit and you will be in the command prompt again. Then the other tool we have system info, which is going to give me uh, the verbose information about my computer. Just type system and info. As you can see how quickly it is going to give me a nitty gritty detail about what my computer is what is the processor type multiprocessor? I'm using Microsoft Corporation, the operating system version and the build. What kind of operating system name is Windows 10 Pro? And there is a you know, ton and ton of information. Then we have route print. If you do route print, So this is just like um, IP routing table. It is having information about the multiple gates there, for example, and which is the best one I'm going to route from this. So this table is going to give, in, in, give you the information about that. And where, where, wherever you will see the network destination is 0.0.0.0, .0 it is nothing but your default gateway. Just, you know, I don't want to, discuss a lot this one what is default uh, I default route because uh, you will be confused then so keep it for the routing uh, topics then I, I, as I said for example we have system info This all information I want to send using email address. Of course, I want to save this information somewhere. So for that, we can use the greater than command. 
and you can tie it uh, just a minute. We will use the command system info, then greater than sign, and where we want to save this file with the what name. Let's put the name of file is uh, system info dot text. When I will hit enter, and if I take a look of directory, uh, there's so much going on. But by the way, if you will go into C Windows System 32, you will find sorry. You will find this file system info.txt, which will be having the information about your system information. So this is how uh, how very quickly you can say whatever the command you are going to give. And it will be saved in this uh, text notepad with the help of greater than sign. So this is the syntax. Then the last command is slash more. And this is also very helpful and handy. Like in this case, if I type directory, and you can see there are so many things, uh, so many pages uh, it is going through, but I do not want this behavior. I want page by page. So what you can do, you can type uh, directory, then pipe command and more. Now you will hit enter. You will see it is going to go page by page. OK. So our demo time uh, ends here. If you have any confusion, you can ask the question. Or shall I proceed? I'm good. I'm also good. Oh, okay. So let's move to the. Uh, these are uh, uh, very good uh, slides, by the way. It is going to give you the, give you the information about uh, how you're gonna do the troubleshooting in your production environment. And these are real case studies, by the way. So let's read, and this is very in uh, simple plain English. We have multiple multiple telephone lines are coming to your IT closet where you are planning to install a new DSL model. The line man confirmed the line man basically may, in your case maybe it's from AT and T service provider uh, who enabled the internet connectivity in one of your telephone cable. Now he wants you to connect the DSL model by clipping RJ11 connector to the right cable which proper tool you will use to find that particular cable to connect with modem. So if I give you these choices, so basically in, uh, if I can demonstrate, because I'm sure you didn't get this, what I'm trying to say. If I go to the whiteboard and illustrate what I'm trying to say, you have office, not the office, but your organization. The name ABC. You have somewhere IT closet in your office or uh, in your organization. Then we have the demarcation point. This is also come under the technical vocabulary. Demarcation point. If somebody is saying kindly go to your demarcation point. It means he is talking about the segregation point from your organization to your ISP. So this thing is segregating your organization versus ISP. So that thing is called demarcation point. And most of the cabling is coming through your demarcation point from your ISP, let's say. And we have multiple line uh, cables that going through some through some ceiling all the way to your IT closets. And let's suppose we have uh, 100 cables. Then the line man 
this is line man by the way he enabled internet connectivity of one of your cable you are here in your it closet he made a call to you saying i have enabled internet connectivity of one of your cable now this is your headache to find which cable is that one so i hope you get my analogy here so let's go back to the slide so this is what i am trying to explain here uh, multiple uh, cab cables are coming to your it closet now you have to identify that cable which proper tool are you going to use to identify please tell me number 2 i think it's called terminal yes okay so number 2 this is from who haifa yes yes i choose the same okay the crystal okay tell me crystal yes the prone and the tune and prone exactly you are very right you will connect this end to the demarcation point and plug rj11 connector because i am talking about dsl modem i am talking about rj11 so this thing has uh, rj45 as well as rj11 so you will plug one end to the rj11 you will switch on this device and then you will take this machine or whatever you could want to name it the other end of this uh, this device you can go into the it closet and you will try to place this thing on these cable one by one and you will listen the sound and uh, you know for uh, if it is not connected or that this device is uh, this cable does not have this uh, connectivity with this one you will hear a different noise but as soon as you will reach let's suppose this is the one uh, which is uh, connected with this device as soon as you, you will uh, bring this device near to this cable you will see a very different kind of noise which is which will identify that this is the one cable that you are looking for okay you just received a call from one of your employee complaining about the internet connectivity issue you want uh, you went to his office you can see the cable is attached to his computer properly but there is no any link activity on the network interface card all other employee have no connectivity issue seems like a cable issue which proper tool are you going to use to check the cable is damaged or not yes right. i i don't know what it's called but number 1 Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. This is. Yeah. Sorry, Crystal. I didn't hear. I was saying it's the cable tester number one. Me too. Actually. Exactly. Exactly. Excellent. So you familiar with these other tools as well? Uh, I think one of them is called the punch tool, and I forgot the name of the other one, but they are two. This one is punch tool. and then crimp crimper this crimping tool c r i m p i n g crimping tool okay now let's move uh, and this is going to be very simple two hosts cannot reach each other what are the main steps you going to take so what are the steps let's suppose uh there is some issue here but you don't know about this you are sitting here as a network it administrator and you want to reach this computer what are the things or steps you going to take crystal do you mind if i answer or would you like to answer? you can answer um i was going to say uh do you want me to start from like basic like first thing i'll do ping okay okay, okay. and then no. trace route exactly that's it that was the whole point of this creating this slide 
So with first thing, uh, tool, you're going to use ping, which we have already gone a lot in detail. And then, uh, sorry. Tracer. Tracer, yeah. Ping will tell the reachability, which is failing. The tracer will tell how far I can reach. Okay, a new Cisco switch device just arrived to your office. Your boss wants its basic provisioning. What kind of cable are you going to use? Yes. Number two, the console cable. Okay. How about you, Hive? I agree. This one? Yes. Yes, you are right. Okay. What is this cable then? G45. I didn't hear. Sorry. Uh, I think she said RG45. Maybe. RG45 is the connector. But what this cable will be called? Oh, uh, cross whatever. Crossover. No. They have standards. Could be CAT5. Oh, yeah, cat five, could cat be five cat e. six, could be cat seven. And by the way, seven is uh, basically coming with 10,000 gig MBPS, sorry, which is 10 gig. Okay, so just giving you a, a flyby information. Seven is giving 10 gig bandwidth these days. And this is the most latest cable these days. We have other CAT5, CAT6, CAT6 e which support like this one is supporting uh, 10 MBBS. Then we have 100 MBBS, 100 base T as well. Okay. And how about this one? And this is obvious. What is this cable? Any idea? Fiber. Mm -hmm. Okay, how are you? I don't know what it's called, but I think it's the one that we, I, I'm not good with cable names, by the way. Uh, okay, but the one is, that uh, we use for, uh, yeah, You are go going ahead. to learn, okay, that's fine. You are going to learn uh, fiber optics in, uh, in the same module which you are learning currently. Uh, you have so many labs as well. Uh, using the fiber optic oh yeah i stopped at fiber optic so yeah it's just a fiber optic cable and this is called basically a single mode okay 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 this is very simple uh, if you're uh, basically how you people creating diagrams, networking diagrams. What kind of software you are using? I think I've used the Cisco one before. I forgot its name now. Uh, it's a visual, packet, maybe. Packet ah, okay, the packet tracer is the application where you, which is used for the simulation. I'm talking about yes. creating, creating the topology. For example, if you want to send uh, the snapshot of your topology of your local area connection, uh, where you're going to design that one. By the way, that's a common uh, real world ticket by vendors, by managers. Hey, can you, can you give me a new topology or can you update the topology? Can you update the diagram? Oh, we got a new vendor. Can you create something for them quickly? You will be doing this as a network engineer on a regular basis. Any idea? Okay, no problem. I will so click can, on this link. Yeah, this, that link is pretty good. It's like a web-based link you can use and you can create a lot of uh, different diagrams in there, yeah. So link is available and uh, Danish can share this slide. So 
uh, you can copy and paste this link. So can you see? Yes. Okay, so uh, this is the landing page and you are going to draw uh, your network topologies here. And this is uh, very simple. Uh, in a search shape, so you just type, for example, you are going to connect to computers, uh, type computers and hit it, and you will see, and just drag and drop these uh, devices. Okay, and then uh, let's suppose we have a switch inside. Uh, and then you can use, uh, let's see, this one is okay. Then we have like the switch in the middle. And just I want to connect this with the cable. You can grab one end of this cable and connect with this one, while the other one uh, with this uh, with this switch in the same way, and it is not connecting with this one because this is the image. If I will use let's suppose uh, some other the switch, and you can click on a more result to see some other options. Let's suppose uh, this is. Uh, very common representation of the switch. And just delete this one, select this one. As you can see, if you mouse over, you can do with this one. So this is how you are going to connect your piece of information one by one. With. So this is how you can create very quickly your topology. And if you move this one, you can see uh, your connections is not disconnecting so you can move anywhere wherever you want so see how quickly you can create your topology so i just added this as an add-on so you can have a better idea as a basic it network engineer at the beginner level if somebody asks you uh, to design the topology uh, at least you, you should have a better idea uh, where to go and how to uh, create and similarly you can like drag and drop the routers and we have so many options that are available in this. Okay, demo time, White Shark. I think with this, we have already uh, done this one and we are going to do a lot in detail, White Shark. And I'm going to give you White, White Shark dose on every session. And I will make you expert in this White Shark. So I'm not going to give you a demonstration on this fire shop. You have already gone through the TCP UDP.